Oh, man. Welcome to NFL Films. Um, that was a hell of a game. I, I, I don't even know where to start because there were so many things that happened. Um, and uh, I just know there were two teams that played awfully hard. I, You know, I, I enjoy a team that plays as hard as they do. And we, we went into this thing. I told my team. You know, this is going to be a slugfest, and it's uh, that team plays as hard as anybody we've played. Um, I am going to politic. They, they're an NCAA team if I've ever seen one. They're, they got a lot of things. We did a heck of a job on Davis, and he is a heck of a player. Those other guys made shots. Uh, we did a pretty good job inside uh, with so many different guys, and we were digging on Hammonds, and he's played so well this year, and Haas is so big. I mean, it was a case when we lost Dawson um, early. It, uh, it made it difficult. Uh, you know, we, we were getting out-rebounded. We ended up down one. We just gang-rebounded. We had so many guys that stepped up, whether it be guys like Costello or Kobe, my, uh, my Wyoming Flash. You know, he did so many things. Elvin Ellis gave us some things. Tom gave us some things. Uh, but Trice and Valentine needed to really raise their game up a level, and I thought both of them did. I'll be damned if I can figure out why we're still missing some free throws. I mean, we've been shooting them so good in practice, but I guess I might as well find one negative thing and then move on from there. So I, uh, I'm proud of this team. Uh, you don't know what it's like to... Uh, go through the injuries that we've had and then tonight the foul trouble and the injury to Dawson it just made our bench extremely small against a very very good team that was playing for a lot and still is and uh, I'll take questions Tom over here first two part question first can you give us an update on Dawson what's wrong what do you know you know he's walking around down there uh, I mean he was out of it when I went in at halftime he was flat on the table um I have no idea right now. Um, says he feels a little better. Uh, you know, I think he just, I mean, he got, he got like, what's the name from the thunder? He got a little dent here, uh, a little dimple. Maybe it looks cute to some, but I didn't enjoy it at all. And, it, uh, you know, he was bleeding a little bit early, and uh, he was out of it. But uh, at the end here, he was at least a lot more with it. And... Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. I, I, I'd say tomorrow I could give you a better update than I could tonight. Second part. Second part is you are not one to talk about achievements, but it, when you take a moment, this was your 15, 20-plus win in the last 18 years. I know you like to reflect on the players, but that's in a pretty amazing legacy. Would you talk about it, please? Not much, but uh, I just look at con the schedule we play every year. Um, Consistency is what I strive for the whole time. And, uh, you know, my good friend Doug Wojcik came in, who was with us here, and I think 03, 04, one, one of the 18 or 19 win seasons. And he, he was yelling at me because we looked at that schedule. That was that one that we played the Celtics, the Knicks, and the Spurs. And, uh, you know, I think we've played a tough schedule. I think we've we've been fairly consistent. But... We got some work to do now, you know. I mean, we're not done yet, and I'm gonna, you know, someday I'm gonna be done. Years from now, and then I'll elaborate on all the great things that have happened to me. The 20th win, though, and this is probably a game that gets you into the NCAA tournament without worrying. Any thoughts on that? And that keeps that streak alive, and how important that was uh, for this group. Well, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say a couple of these nights I've been laying there, you know, after. You know, when we got beat by Texas Southern, I mean, I knew this team was going to be, you know, in some ways we performed better than I thought we would. In other ways, I'm disappointed because of the missed free throws throughout the year, costing us at least four, maybe five games. And and I told my staff, I said, you know, we we got to be careful because games like this can haunt you. And they can cost you if you're one game out, you know. And, boy, for a while it looked like that could be a possibility after the loss to Minnesota. Uh, but uh, didn't really put pressure on them, but I didn't really not. I, 
I talked about it from the standpoint, if you want to leave here with positive memories, um, we got to suck it up. I mean, we, we talked about the scouting report for five minutes. We talked about the energy level and, and playing harder and gang rebounding. And, I mean, we were so small a couple times in there. We had those three midget guards, and then we had, you know, Kobe at center. And, uh, and I'm sure Judd's really happy with me back in Spokane watching that. But we were in so much foul trouble that uh, I just I can't say enough that, yeah, I feel good about the 20 wins. I don't know what that does for the NCAA tournament. It puts us definitely a step closer. And uh, streaks, I guess, matter to me a little bit because streaks means consistency. And consistency is what I've strided, strived for since the day I got on this campus. And, uh, you know, I knew we were going to have our up and down years, but can we be consistently, you know, right there? And, uh, you know, we've been consistently in the hunt, and I guess that's what I'm proudest of. Tom, uh, aside from Dawson, uh, is it going to be a little crowded in the training room? Because, you know, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, Trice got I, that. Tom uh, got hurt too a little bit. Trice got hurt. Tom got hurt. Uh, uh, I don't know. Valentine. Valentine got hurt. It was a mass unit. And what I give those guys credit for, I mean, Dawson couldn't come back. I mean, he was out. But the other guys all sucked it up. And um, pretty incredible day, you know. And. And for Tom, his mother flew in, first time she's ever seen him. And uh, had to be a special moment for her. She was bouncing off the walls here during the day. And, you know, for those seniors, uh, Trav and his whole family, you know, came up, and brothers and sisters and grandparents. And BJ's whole family was up. And I think uh, Keenan's whole family was up, too. He just let some of them sit in the stands. But... Uh, Pretty awesome when you can go out that way. That's six out of seven that we've had after. I question doing it once in a while. We lost that one. Day Day reminded me of that today. But in all honesty, uh, pretty special when those kids get to um, be rewarded by being in front of their crowd and let their hair down a little bit and watch a video. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate Mark Hollis and our group for letting us do it. Tom, on Costello, uh, first of all, the, the job he did tonight on Hammonds, uh, did, did you, I guess, anticipate that he might be your better option there? And then also I just wanted to ask you about the one moment he had, kind of an outpouring of emotion with the offensive rebound and the dunk and the foul, the end one there, kind of the clinching play. You know, it really was. And uh, after a great rebound, was it on a missed free throw? Jeez, we don't do that very often, do we? I thought Matt um, – he did play with more emotion, and it wasn't that, you know, Gavin just wasn't able to play. He was in foul trouble the whole time, and um, Gab gets his arms involved and can't do that, and Matt just gets his body involved, and that's what you got to do. But uh, that kid's good, man. He's he's a load to try to cover, and I thought Matt does a great job of getting him the ball in different spots, but I thought we did a pretty good job of putting pressure on the passer. And any time it went in, we got some help. I mean uh, – you know, give Dwayne and and, uh, and Dane a lot of credit for, you know, you know kind of worked hard on a, a game plan to to try to do that. But I think you got to give our players credit because I thought they played with energy just about the whole night. Uh, kind of with that, what happened at halftime, or how did you go about halftime? Because the second half of that game, there was a lot more energy defensively. You guys played a lot better compared to that first half. Well, you know, I thought we had some energy the first half. We, we didn't play very smart. You know, I, we always talk about you have to play, you know, you have to play hard, you have to play good, and you have to play smart. And, you know, we just weren't playing very smart. And then we were ma- missing shots, and we, you know, we really had some wild lineups in there a couple times that wasn't very conducive. Um, you know, everybody got after everybody at halftime, to be honest with you. I mean, players were – kind of upset they felt good about the comeback but uh, they know we didn't uh we didn't do some of the things we said we were going to do they had 13 second chance points in the first i don't know how many minutes you're the stat guy dookie not doing his job again but anyway we had we had a bunch of uh points that they scored in that first half and uh that was disappointing but some of them they were just bigger and 
and a little stronger, and uh, especially with some of the lineups we had in there. Was, I mean, we went with Marvin Tum more than a few minutes in that game. I mean, Marvin and uh, Kobe, not exactly a Big Ten, Mac, Northern Michigan lineup, you know, as far as size and that. And uh, so I think that played some of it. But I also think, um, you know, we challenged them. We told them BJ wouldn't be back. We knew right when we got in there. And uh, I think they challenged themselves a little bit. That was encouraging to see. Tom, um, talking a little bit uh, with, with Brandon Dawson out of the game, could you, can you describe what you saw out of Marvin Clark? Well, you know, he had his moments and uh, a lot of pressure on Marvin. He hit a couple big shots, you know, and yet, you know, the problem is with BJ, we can switch four and we can do some things. And they started going with smaller lineups and, Marv hasn't had a chance to do that. I mean, Marv's going to be good. It's just going to, you know, he was thrown into the fire this year after not really playing a ton of basketball. And, you know, guy that I'd love to have redshirted just didn't have the option to do it. But he is getting better. Um, he's a real good shooter. He's lost some confidence. And he's getting some of that back. But he battled. He, he did some things. He got on the floor a couple times. Uh you know, I thought Bryn battled a little harder. I was going to look up uh, how many rebounds Bryn got because he, he got a couple. Yeah, he got two, and he battled a little bit. I think another stat that was important against a team like that is they only have eight turnovers. So, uh, yeah, I got something out of Marv, and uh, best of Marv's yet to come. Tom, I asked uh, Matt – if it felt like Gene and Judd were coaching tonight with the physicality, and he laughed and said yes, but he said he likes it because he thought the officiating was very consistent and good and had no outcome on the game. Your thoughts on that physicality? Well, we're both complaining a lot, I think, you know, and uh, it wasn't the normal games you get to see. If it was up to me, you know, could I, and I could go back to Antonio and Mateen and, you know, football pads. If I did it now, I think one of the players would sue me. So it's not as much fun for me, but I agree with Matt. Um, you know, it was it was a tough game to officiate. And, uh, you know, I have respect for him. And uh, since we both work for those two guys, I talked to him a minute after. I said it looked like Gene and Judd. It looked like Clem Haskins. I mean, uh, you know, I told Gus Johnson, I said, that was that was an old-time old smash-mouth game. And, and I, I'm impressed that we were able to play in one. You know, I've made no bones about it. We're not as physical or tough a team as we've been um, most of the years I've been here, and not all their fault, just kind of the makeup of our team. But uh, to see them battle in a game that meant a lot to us uh, was really, really encouraging. A couple more? Um, I think you, met, you mentioned the, the plan defensively. I think they had four points in the first ten minutes of the second half. So how much of that was – Plan, execution, emotion, grit, the building, getting involved. You know, like I told our team, I said, um, you know, the scouting report's great, but energy, energy, energy. And I thought the second half, we dug in the post. We were moving all around. We had very active hands. Audrey's probably right. You know, the first half, we, we played harder, but we just didn't play very smart. We made some... So not very smart plays. And we probably didn't play as hard as we did the second half. I'll have to look at the film for that. But, um, yeah, I thought we did a, a, a good job of uh, digging. I thought we did a pretty good job of contesting shots. I thought we did a pretty good job of dribble penetration. Uh, and we had some bizarre lineups in there. I mean, we really did. Tom, and you've always been a guy who's – held seniors in high regard and I'm just curious to know in retrospect has your approach when it comes to coaching a senior changed maybe now as compared to back with like Paul Davis and Drew Neitzel and the, and the Flintstone guys you know I don't think so everybody wants it too because of the Twitter world you know you're not watch what you say poor Kevin Stallings you know and I tell my kids sometimes I'm going to get after him you know but but I think what our players understand, and this is the bottom line to this whole thing, they got a job and I got a job. And my job isn't just to hold them accountable to what I want to accomplish, it's to, it's to hold them accountable to the, what they want to accomplish. And uh, I'm telling you, man, it's 
it's not easy to win games in this league. And, uh, and this team isn't really as gifted as some we've had. And uh, you look at the situation with the free throws and that, um, you know, I feel pretty proud of what they've done under those circumstances. We've become a much better defensive team. Um, haven't played as well the last couple of games, but I was missing really my best defender and my best rebounder tonight. Uh, for most of that game, I don't know what Brandon played, six, eight minutes, whatever he played. But uh, you know what? I'm going to push a freshman. I'm going to push a senior. I don't, I don't think it's any different. Maybe it is. It would be a good question to ask them. But uh, it's hard to believe that I'm thinking about Brandon Dawson or Travis Trice. And I'm looking at the aircraft carrier when we're in our pregame meal today, big picture on the wall down there. And I'm thinking, God, those guys played in that. And then I'm – looking at Brandon, thinking about him blowing his knee his first year and missing that whole summer and coming back and playing so well over in Germany. It's been some incredible memories, you know, Travis, the sickness and that he went through. It's, um, it's a hard day, senior day. I, I think the best thing about having every all the celebration after, I don't think I'd be very good before. You know, it's hard enough to give a speech that night uh, before the game. Um, so it's worked out good and I think I'm just as hard on the seniors as the freshmen. Just to pick up on those. Sure. Going um, early in the day, so it doesn't matter if you're on the floor or you're in the arena or the floor, so it was just like just having to look at a senior differently today and then really on the defensive side, you kind of just look at them differently. Yeah, I'd say I'd look at them a little differently because I realize how uh, what an impact what I do has on their life. Because now I've had a bunch of them that have gone off, some a little – feeling different when they left in certain ways, you know. And then a year or two goes by, and when they come back, it's, it's like, so rewarding. So I look at them a little differently now uh, in that respect. I, uh, I have such an appreciation. You know, Derek Nix was here a couple weeks ago, and, man, we talked for hours, you know. And so one thing I've been the luckiest guy in America on, I, I've had relationships with 99% of my guys, in fact, probably 100 been a couple that weren't maybe good relationships at the end, but uh, but not many. And uh, and I think those relationships have, is what makes senior night so difficult for me. Um, I take a vested interest in their lives, and that's the one thing I can say that I do. I take a vested interest in their lives, and when you do that, sometimes you get too close to them, and it's hard to you know to get through that. But uh, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it because every Christmas the calls. I wouldn't change it because every football, you know, reunion they're back. I wouldn't change it because uh, today when yeah, you struggle a little bit on Sunday, they're still all texting and calling. Um, the greatest part about a senior day and what leads to the rest of their life, hopefully. And that was part of my pregame speech, you know, that do something tonight, it's a memory maker for life. We all remember – what we did last, whether we like it or not. And uh, that's going to be a hell of a game to tell their grandkids about someday, you know. Uh, a hell of a game. I just hope D'Antonio was proud of us. Tom, kind of along those lines, seeing Trice go for 27 tonight, I know he missed a few free throws, but what did it mean to you for having have him go out with a performance like that? He made some big shots. You know, he had some good shots early, and that, that was part of the reason we didn't play as well early. We missed some good shots early. You don't get a ton of them against them. Then he started making some good shots. Then he started making some tough shots. But, you know, we got some breakouts. We thought our break, we thought that was one area we could really go, and we did some of that. I was surprised we knocked the ball loose a little bit more for a team like us who's not, you know, our best steal guy is, is DJ, and he didn't play. So, um, yeah, I was just, uh, listen, I'm probably prouder and happier than I'm acting because uh, I got games left. But that was a gut check. That was a character-building game. And maybe it builds character for this team for the rest of the season. Maybe it builds character for them for the rest of their lives. But somewhere they're going to know that they can suck it up and get it done even when some things are stacked against them. And if you would have heard the way they were rallying around Kobe in there, God, Kobe looked like a midget out there on that guy, didn't he? He was so small and he was battling and, God, you got to appreciate that. So, anything else?
Thank you so much.